<laughs> what a backwards uh, 70s music. Who picked this shit? Hello, everyone. And welcome to Mostly Football. Episode 2. <laughs> Tonight, the guys and I are talking NFL Draft. Ben Simmons and TJ's Top 5. I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> Let's play out now. There you go. All right. Nice. Well, they really took it on the solo toward the end there, huh? <laughs> Guys, my co host, TJ, Whiskey, Nate, the Dirty Bird. What's going on? It's great. I'm actually so now. Now I'm starting to have things to look forward to during the week. Now, <laughs> uh, that's sad. It's not sad. how. I mean, I look forward to our podcast on Tuesday, and now that I have this, you know, I love sports, so I have I have this to look forward to as well. So I'm always good. I'm I'm I'm, I'm now I can really do some prep, especially when it comes to sports. It's my it's my go to. I'm just, just here gotta, until Dylan's gotta, check bounces. It's got a warm, fuzzy feeling all over from that. Oh, TJ? Man. What's up, dude? TJ, you're going to learn sports. You're going to learn sports doing these, I promise you. You're going to learn today. You're going to you're gonna learn sports. I care sport. about what happens on the field. I don't give a shit what goes on the back. That's the Off the field is the most important part. I don't give two shits about that. You can't get to on the field until you get off the field. Look, one of my favorite defensive players was Ray Lewis. If he can get away with murder, I don't give a shit as long as he can make a tackle. <laughs> great point. That's yeah, a great point. That is a great point. I mean, God for God's sakes, Michael Vick killed dogs and got away with it. Hey, hey, hey. You know what? Dogs. Okay. <laughs> Uh, TJ cares heavily about dogs. TJ, tell us about your dogs real quick. Uh, they're both shitheads and uh, they hate me. Next. <laughs> oh, come on now. What are their names? Uh, shithead one and shithead two. All right, fine. I'll get it out of them tonight. It's Got Blue it? and uh, Tucker. Oh, of course. You want to say it as soon as I say something? Uh, yeah, you, you damn skippy, homie. We got uh, Tucker. We got Blue and Tucker. There we go. Starting off tonight's show, because we're called mostly football, we dabble in some things outside of football. Yes, sir. We are going to start off with some Ben Simmons talk, and since I don't know anything about it, all I know is that everyone in Philadelphia hates Ben Simmons, and now yeah. apparently... Uh, everyone maybe in Brooklyn everyone... hates him, too. <laughs> yeah. Nate, what's going on over there? So, all right, so Ben Simmons, we all know, was traded to the Brooklyn Nets. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. We don't all know. I don't know shit. <laughs> so Ben Simmons was traded to the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, was it midseason? Um, and he obviously had a falling out in Philadelphia. There were some issues with him mentally, allegedly some injuries. Um, he gets to Brooklyn. He doesn't play a game. Everyone's anticipating that he might play. Before the playoffs, he might get in during the playoffs. Well, as of right now, he the Brooklyn Nets have been officially eliminated from the playoffs. They were officially swept by the Celtics today. No. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's that's gonna be the talk of the town. Uh Ben Simmons was supposed to be cleared for game four, but there were some some issues. Apparently, his um uh, his Agent, obviously, we all know Rich Paul is his agent, he, who's also LeBron's agent and a whole bunch of other NBA players' agent. Old Dick they, Paul. Huh? Old Dick Paul. We all know about that guy. <laughs> so, apparently, there was, like, they, they were saying that he was rehabbing his back. Um, a lot of talk, well, again, like, a lot of talk was for him to play tonight. It didn't happen. His agent rich paul was saying that there was a lot of like mental issues and some setbacks with his back so no one really knows the truth with ben simmons me personally i feel like he's just uh a drama queen 
And I don't think he's worth the drama, to be honest. I mean, defensively, he's great, but that's about it. What are we talking about again? Anything. I'll tell you what we're talking about. Anything two, anything two feet, anything outside of two feet from under the rim, Ben Simmons is useless. So, um, I don't know what Brooklyn's going to do. Honestly, I, I don't know how they're going to handle the situation. I, I feel like this is a situation that it's going to blow up if they handle it wrong. But for me personally, I cut my ties with Ben Simmons. I'd let him walk. I'd let someone else deal with him because he clearly, he's clearly not. He's, he's not worth it. We got Tony Allen coming in the house. Let's talk about Cam Newton. You know what? Let's take a let's take a break. We, let's take a, we let's talked take about a Cam last week and someone got their feelings hurt. But we're not gonna That's talk it. about that anyway. If you want Cam Newton talk, you go ahead and write back to episode one, my friend, because there was plenty <laughs> of it. Plenty of it. There was definitely plenty of it. But uh overrated. But honestly, uh, honestly, this like I said, this whole Ben Simmons thing, it's it's a lot of drama for nothing. For a player that's for me personally, he's average at best. And that's just me. A lot of people might disagree and say, oh, he's he can't shoot. He's no he's 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 a he's a six nine point guard that can't shoot. <laughs> six nine. <laughs> Jesus. But that, that, that's, that's my opinion. But yeah, as of right now, the Brooklyn Nets season is over, and I think they'll have time to sit back and assess this situation with Ben Simmons. Uh, who do you think will be back next year from the super team they put together this year? There's, the only two people left is KD and Kyrie. <laughs> So I think they're going to be back. James Harden with the Sixers now. I don't. I, I don't think. I don't think that Ben Simmons. I don't think he's going to make the roster next year. I don't think he's going to be in Brooklyn next year, unless something happens between now and next season. Some would say he, he he's the kid I'm the NBA. I wouldn't go that far. Yeah, I wouldn't go that far. He I didn't get an MVP, far. or did? Yeah, he? exactly. I wouldn't go that far. Um, but I don't I don't think Ben I think I think something's gonna happen over summer and Ben Simmons is not gonna be on a he's not gonna be a Brooklyn net next year. He, he's gonna end up somewhere else. Um you got a likely team in mind. A likely team for Ben Simmons. San Antonio. Oh Spurs coming out of left field. It depends on if great. It depends on if Coach Pop comes back. I don't. I don't, I don't think he. I don't think he's going to. Um. Honestly, it is really going to depend on what team wants to deal with him. Because at one point, I know Golden State was wanting to get him, but I was like, I don't see him fitting in Golden State. Um. Isn't Michael if, Jordan like a co-owner of the Golden State or something? No, nah, it's the. The Hornets. Oh, the Hornets. Okay. I thought it was the Bobcats. No, they're the Hornets. No, I you thought sure they're not, the, you, you sure they're not the mind. Yellow Jackets? No, I'm positive. Are, Are you they sure the, they're not the Ferrets? Are they the Red Jesus. Red Hornets? Jesus. Are they not the Mexican Hummingbirds? They're, I'm pretty sure they're not the Mexican I thought, never mind. Yeah, don't, but, we don't need that in <laughs> Honestly, I don't really have a like a good landing spot for him, but you never know. Somebody might want him, but I, I just don't see him being worth the trouble. TJ, what are your thoughts on all this? You know, we've we've seen some things in the past. I think both uh, what Simone Biles and Naomi uh, Nasaka, both, yeah, the whole mental issue thing. Yeah, you know, they they take some time out of their events to deal with mental issues. What's your thoughts on that sort of thing? Uh, I can give you my thoughts really quick on this. Uh, don't know, don't care, and I don't watch basketball. Next. Wow. There you go. And that was Time with TJ. We're going to get a little sound effect for that one. <laughs> Nate? I mean, 
here's my here's the thing if it's if it's a real situation a real issue take care of yourself mentally take care of your you take care of your mental but if it's just to get attention i mean cam newton hey i mean at the end of the day you shouldn't be you you shouldn't do that to get attention like it's not you got to understand the moment you become a superstar in your sport that spotlight's on you. You're, you're gonna have. You're gonna have the attention. You're gonna have the stress of your, of your profession. That's just what it is. I you remember. Sign a contract. You signed up for it. Like you signed up for fame. When you sign a contract, whether it's NFL, in NBA, NHL, MLB, wherever it is, you're signing up for fame. That's what you're signing up for. Yes, you're signing up to play a game, but you're also signing up for fame. So you have to understand that there's going to be a lot of stress and, and, and that's going to come with it. You just got to learn how to deal with it. A lot of them want the money. They don't want the uh, fame that comes with it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the hard part. Like the fame is going to come with it. It's just it's just what it is. Like you you got to take you just you got to deal with it. Like for me personally with Kelvin Ridley, Kelvin Ridley, I did he have did he really have an issue? I don't know. But for me personally, I I got to I got to hear like what was your reasoning? Why did you have to step away? What was your reasoning for stepping away? Like he kept he they would just they just kept saying it was a mental thing. I'm like so basically I can say I ha I'm having a mental issue and I don't want to play because my team sucks. Cuz that's what it felt like to me honestly. That's what exactly what it felt. It felt like to me is like he didn't want to play, especially after Julio got traded and now all this pressure's on him. I, I just felt like it was just more of like, I don't want to play this season because my team sucks. And, you know, it's just everyone feels the heat, man. Like you said, the fame comes with the money. And uh, I feel like, man, to, to really know what it's like to be, so recognizable and never be able to leave your house without a bunch of people just swarming you asking for stuff i mean i all the way up to the president people snap you know i mean from trump to biden i mean just look at how much it age well it's not the fame that ages you per se when you're president <laughs> but like sure. even when you think about like uh like childhood actors like child actors and stuff i mean they usually never come out normal whatever normal is like people just it's so hard to maintain your sanity when everything is just, oh, here's another article about how you messed up. And here's another picture of you that's unflattering. It's just, it's, it is tough to maintain that. And these, surprisingly, like these type of things are outliers, like in a, in a landscape where it could be a whole bunch of people dealing with this type of thing. And everyone does. It's kind of surprising that you don't see more of these stories of, People taking time off or like, you know, someone snapping and, you know, maybe they pull an OJ Simpson or maybe they just go for a walk. But like, it's, you know, the, the fame is tough to handle at this level for sure. It, it, it is, you know, but, at, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, there's obviously there's stress when it comes to work. Hey, fame is tough for anybody. Just look at Johnny Depp and Charlie Sheen. Thank you. I mean, my OJ joke didn't really land, so I'm glad you kind of brought <laughs> something else with it. I appreciate that. Absolutely. So, moving on from Ben Simmons and basketball, let's get into some of the offseason moves that have been made thus far. Uh, obviously, some huge trades, some big signings. Uh, no more so than in the wide receiver category. Let's start off. I want your guys' opinion on, you know, there were some big ballers moved around. Amari Cooper, Allen Robinson. <laughs> he's, a, he's, he's a big baller. There was none. There's none bigger than Devontae Adams. Green Bay Devontae is a terrible Adams. organization. Green Bay is a terrible organization. Period. I'm just gonna. I'm going to say this. They're a bad, 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 bad organization. The only issue is the only reason why they're not being treated like Cleveland and Jacksonville and the Jets is because they have. They have more relevant championships. That's it. That's the only reason why. That is the only reason why that they're not treated like dog shit. You're wrong, and I'll tell you why. The why? only reason they're treated—they're not treated that way, like the Jags and everybody else—is because 
the trophy was named after their famous head coach. No, they didn't get treated like that. They just you you got to see like they're bad. Like they treated Evan Rodgers horrible. If any team was to do to to do what they did to Evan Rodgers, that team would have got dragged. They drafted a they drafted a quarterback in the first round when they yeah, really but, needed help offensively. But they're all you know this team's they were planning for the future. They did the exact same thing to him that they did to Brett Favre. It's planning for the future. Yeah, but they, Aaron Rodgers wasn't the first. Aaron Rodgers was was a late round. He wasn't he wasn't direct. He wasn't the first round. No, he was late in the first round. He was still in the first round. He just fell all the way to the Packers. Oh, he did. At that point, they're like, hey. This because the second, you know, quarterback available, Alex Smith got taken number one. Uh, we got old ass Brett Favre. He's always threatening him to retire. Kind of like, you know, Aaron was always kind of like, ah, I don't know if I want to stick around or not. So you leave Brett Favre alone. It, he's a, he's not a role model. He's a jeans model. And that's the great thing about the Packers is much like the Pittsburgh Steelers, much like the Baltimore Ravens, they usually don't have to bring in big time free agents because they draft so well and they hit on late round picks and things like that. And unlike the Baltimore Ravens, the Pittsburgh Steelers and mostly the Green Bay Packers, uh, the quarterback play has been spectacular for the past several decades, especially for Green Bay. So uh, they haven't really had to juice up a lot of other things when your quarterback is making everyone else look so darn good. I don't know. I just know Green Bay is, they got to fix it. Cause now like, you lose, I think they lost two, three of their receivers, including Devontae. They lost two. Yeah, they lost Devontae and Marquez Valdez Scantling. Yes. Hey, so you Valdez. so you lose two of your, your your premier receivers. And now you're stuck with nothing. You you Evan Jones is good. Your running backs are okay. They're they're a little bit above average. Your tight end play. He tore his ACL. He's good, but we got to see how he's going to bounce back next season. Your defense is shaky at <laughs> best. Your defense is shaky. Um, so we'll have to see how they're going to bounce back. But for me personally, when I saw that Devontae Adams traded to Oakland, uh, to Las Vegas, I was surprised. But I, in my mind, I'm like, why Vegas? Uh, Derek Carr. Derek he played Carr. with Derek Carr in college. Derek Carr is a below average quarterback. He's about to look above average. All right. I don't think so. I don't. I don't think so. I don't think that. Maybe I could be wrong. Maybe Adam Devontae Adams might change it, but at the end, of the, like, who else do you have to throw to? I mean, they should be actually pretty good because Darren Waller is a beast at tight end. Yeah, Maybe one of when he's healthy, he wasn't. Yeah, and then Hunter Renfro catches a lot of passes. So I think this is a good move for them. I mean, I'm not I, mean I know it is. It's, it's obviously a good move. move. I just, for me personally, I don't trust Derek Carr. So um, I yeah. would have to see how Derek Carr is really going to take this gift that was given to him. So two points on that, and then I'll kick it over to TJ. Uh, my buddy Dave is a huge uh, Green Bay Packers fan, so I get the inside scoop on everything, but also I get the basic analysis, and he made it clear. Listen, Devontae missed plenty of time, I think, two seasons ago, and the Packers didn't miss a beat. I don't think they lost a game in that amount of time, or at least they were still the number one scoring offense by the end of the year. So I will say Aaron Rodgers is the kind of guy, just like Tom Brady, uh, who does a lot with a little – and they'll probably be fine. They definitely won't operate at the level they did last year. I mean, when you have a healthy A-Rod, a healthy Devontae, it's just beautiful to watch. But, you know, they'll get someone fairly high in the draft, I feel like, especially losing Devontae. And then Aaron Rodgers will be Aaron Rodgers. Like, he's just that, – that's the funny thing about watching Devontae Adams highlights. It's really just watching Aaron Rodgers highlights because he puts every pass on the money. And then um, when you want to talk about going to the Raiders, uh, yeah, it's a great move. Actually, I wanted to talk about something else to wrap that up. But anyway, him going to the Raiders is a great move. Uh, him and Carr obviously have that history together. 
And now I'm going to kick it over for TJ for the original um, question, which was of all these ballers. And yes, Amari Cooper is a baller, sir. Uh, which do you think is going to have the biggest impact, the best season for their team by the end? Uh, you know, you've got names like Tyree Kill, Devontae Adams, Allen Robinson. I'm just going to say Tyree Kill because it's the only name I recognize. That's fair. That's fair. I think he's the, you know, they brought him in to be the RPO. Let's take a slant to the house. And if he can pull a double move on a guy, hopefully Tua can get it to him. I think Tua, it's so funny how, like, the national sentiment on him has soured so since that hip injury. Like, he was the darling. They don't trust Tua. They don't trust Tua. Miami does not trust Tua. And I think that they're going – they're not going to take a, a quarterback early, but they're going to take a quarterback. You because want to know why nobody trusts Tua? Why? Alabama. Yeah, well, Mac Jones is going to break that stereo, that stereotype. Um, I honestly think that they're, they're going to draft a quarterback. And because, I mean – if you look at their, if you look at their sub, they got Mike Gusecki, they have uh, Jalen Waddle, and then you added Tyreek Hill. You can't go wrong there as a quarterback. And I mean uh, Cedric Wilson from the Cowboys, nice little number three there. You, you you can't you can't go wrong. You have a pretty nice wideout court, and your running backs are, uh, can use some help. But I think honestly, I think that if he doesn't perform the way he should and i don't think he's going to i think i'm pretty sure he will be out next year this will definitely be two of last year because the dolphins going to get tyree kill says like hey we want to see what you can do we're going to give you the weapons we want to see what you can do with them and no me personally i feel like mike gusecki is a top he he's definitely in a top five in tight end he doesn't he just doesn't get a lot he doesn't get enough uh recognition to be honest. Uh yeah. He needs to he needs to do better. You know, he's he's very capable. He's an athlete for sure. He just doesn't dominate like he should. And it's not his fault. You gotta you gotta have you got a quarterback who can barely throw the ball properly. I'm not he can throw the ball. He can throw the ball deep, but he it's called accuracy for a reason. And that's the issue. And and also he they treat him like Baker. Like when games when it's late, do you really want to trust? Do you really want to trust him with the ball late in the game? True, true. I mean, and they added guys in the backfield too. They added Chase Edmonds, and yeah, then so, they also so, you, so they're stacking up. They're stacking the talent around him. So either they're stacking the talent around around for him, or for whatever quarterback they draft and they take in the draft. Right. I mean, probably the biggest pickup, oh, not besides Tyree Kill for them, is uh, they signed Teron Armstead, left tackle from the Saints. So they definitely made huge. Oh, so they're investments. building something for somebody. <laughs> yeah, no, they made huge investments these past two seasons. They want to win for sure. So uh, if, if Tua can't get it done, and it's funny too because this head coach, this new head coach, obviously has no. I mean, the, the organization probably as a whole wants Tua to do well, but I don't feel like the coach, if they draft someone. Uh, is going to think twice about bringing his guy in uh, to see what he can do over Tua. And that was, I think that was the thing with I, – I I heard a lot of conflicting stories as far as why uh, they fired Flores. But a lot of it was saying that Brian Flores wasn't sold on Tua and then they he wanted Tua out. But the organization was sold on Tua, so obviously – Head coach organization, I think we're a little bigger, so we're gonna get rid of you. So right. I think honestly, for me personally, I think it's going to be I, I think this is this is definitely gonna be a make a make or break year for Tua. Uh I personally wouldn't have fired Brian Flores, but I, I don't run that organization. So really? I didn't know that. <laughs> so they they're gonna fail, him. I feel like they're gonna fail miserably without him. Breaking news, folks. Nate doesn't run the organization. I, I really think I think I think they're gonna fall. Who is who's the new coach? They got it's the guy from the offensive coordinator from San Francisco, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah, it's 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 him. So 
I don't know. I, I don't I don't know how that's gonna play out, but it's gonna be interesting. So I mean, of all the guys who moved around, who do you think is gonna have the best season? Devontae Adams is the easy pick. I don't know if maybe you guys had another one in mind. Devontae Adams is the easy pick, but I just don't trust Derek Carr. Um I won't be surprised personally if Allen Robinson, now with the Rams, has an even better. Oh season. yeah, I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, I'm gonna. That's gonna be my pick. Allen Robinson is gonna have to be my pick because he's gonna. They're gonna open a playbook for him. So and that's and if OBJ and obviously I think they're gonna resign OBJ. So once he's healthy. Allen Robinson, Cooper Cup, OBJ, I feel like it's going to be a pretty decent wide uh, receiving course. So I think Allen Robinson might have a pretty decent season. But as far as, impa- as far yeah, as impact, boring you again? as far as impact goes, <laughs> I have to say, I- I'm going to have to say, it's, it's definitely going to be Devontae Adams as far as impact goes. Yeah. No, I agree. And I don't think that Robinson's going to have a better season than Devontae by any means. But maybe, because I'm skeptical about Tua as well, maybe he ends up having not necessarily more catches or yards than Tyreek. But I won't be surprised if he has more touchdowns than Tyreek. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that, that's going to be, be the biggest thing is, is, is how Tua and Tyreek play together. Uh, I know TJ likes to hate on Mari Cooper, but Mari Cooper can put up numbers. Oh, that was my second point, too. I'll go back to it. Mark and Poop, Mari Pooper, Amari Cooper can put up some numbers, and Deshaun Watson is very used to targeting one guy, uh, i.e., DeAndre Hopkins. So also look out for Cooper and Watson. You know, I, I guess they're boys. That. I forgot that they're in Cleveland together. Yeah. So watch out for those two as well. Uh, moving on, speaking of Deshaun Watson. Uh, between he and the addition of Russell Wilson to Denver, TJ, we'll start with you on this one. Do you think Russell Wilson or Deshaun Watson will have a better season this year? Is that a serious question? It is. I'm going to have to say Wilson. Okay. Uh, now, that being said, I think uh, Deshaun, Deshaun Watson, He's is he, is he the kid from uh, Houston? Houston. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I think he's going to play with more of a chip on his shoulder. Like he's got one hundred percent, one hundred percent. I think he's going to play with more of a chip on his shoulder, but just because Wilson is Wilson, I, I, I'm not counting him out because I think to to an extent, I think Wilson feels like he still has something left to prove. What I don't know, but I feel like he has something still to prove after the fiasco that went down in Seattle. I mean, just think about that pass. That freaking pass on the goal line when they could have handed it to Marshawn Lynch and Malcolm Butler just jumps that slant route and ruins Seattle's back-to-back Super Bowl Ruined hope. It. Ruined it. I mean, that has to – I mean, even winning the Super Bowl, that moment still has to play in his head every time he closes his eyes. Oh, 100%. But for me personally, Russell Wilson's in a much better, much better situation than Deshaun Watson is. Cleveland's a dumpster fire right now. Because again, you have Baker. And now, so who do we do? Who do we go with? Do we go with Baker? Do we go with Deshaun? If we pick Baker and sit Deshaun on the bench, now we look like a bunch of assholes because we traded all these picks away and now he's sitting on our bench. But if we go for Deshaun, now Baker's a distraction. So with Russell Wilson, he doesn't have to worry about that. He's going into a situation. Denver had they have they have I think they have great great wide receivers. They have a pretty decent run game. The defense isn't too bad. It could be better. So I think he is going to he's going to put himself in a much better situation. And he's not in that run first offense like Seattle was, because that's all they want to do is run, 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 run. And it just – it was – I feel like you got to use Russell. I feel like Denver's going to just say, you know what, go be you. Go do what you want to do. Because it's it's going to work for them. They still have no offense, right? Because I feel like – No, they shipped him in the trade. Oh, so they put it – okay. So, damn. So, 
So they didn't. So Seattle pretty much got the better deal. Uh, I wouldn't say that. They got picks. They got picks. <laughs> they got picks they got and got uh, a couple guys who you know their name. So no but offense, a pretty good tight end. They didn't get Russell Wilson. <laughs> yeah, you didn't get Russell, but you got. So you got no offense. You got DK Metcalf. You have uh, what's this kid's name? Lockett. Tyler Lockett. Yep. He he can he's gonna put up points. So now you add no offense to the mix, and now you just need someone to throw in the ball. Yeah, you got Drew Lock, but I, I feel like I think for me personally, I think Seattle might end up taking uh, what's his name? Is it Pickett, the kid from Pittsburgh? Oh, you think so? I think they might take him. I think they might take – because Malik Willis, I'm kind of still on odds about him. He's an athlete. He can play. He can throw the ball. I'm just I, – I don't, I, I don't know. I don't see him – people are saying that he's a – I don't see him – I don't see him going top ten. I, I, I just don't. I oh, see, yeah. I, I see, like, pick – you know, my, door, my dark horse quarterback is going to be uh, – the kid from what the hell is that noise? Was a dog moaning in the background? Oh, sorry, it's cat. the cat snoring. <laughs> sorry, I was like, what is that noise? Literally uh, the loudest cat. I would have punched that cat. <laughs> it's the kid. Hey, hey, grab your cat by the. Oh, never mind. <laughs> no, the kid from uh, Cincinnati. I think he might. I think he might be a, a dark horse. I really do. I think he might be a steal in the top ten for teams that need a quarterback. And there's a couple that are up there. Uh, oh, yeah. I know what, the Jets have a couple early picks as well. Yeah, I think they're four and ten. Yeah, so the Jets have a couple early picks, and there's another. There's a few other team, a few, another team that has a couple of their picks. So I, yeah, I think Giants, damn Giants. <laughs> And, and they're going to be another team that's looking for a quarterback. So I think, honestly, I think one of those two, I don't think Malik Willis is going to make it in the first round. He might be like a, a second, maybe third. Oh, wow. But that's that's just me. Like, I'm not saying he, he's not a bad quarterback. He, you heard he, it here like, first, folks, on Mostly Football. Nate throwing it out there. Malik Willis falls out of the first round. I, I think he all does. your I, I think text he does. messages and hate mail to <laughs> Nate. I think he does, and the reason why is because he I've seen a lot of his tape. Yeah, he can he can escape, he can he can throw the ball. Don't get me wrong. He can, but it just I just don't see I just don't see it. I, I don't see him being I don't see a team saying, hey, let's let's take a chance on this guy. I really hope that this kid is the last pick in the first round. <laughs> That'd be so I fun. really do. If he, hey, you know what? If he he's going to be texting us like, "Oh my god, I was right. Oh my god, I was right." If he makes, if he makes it in, if he makes it in the first round, it, it'll be a for me. It'll be a surprise, but I, I, I think he might be like an early second round. Okay, I, I do. I think, I think right now, a lot of teams are just what's his really looking, name? They're looking for something that's solid, and I feel like. Honestly, I feel like the kid from Pittsburgh is probably the most solid quarterback. What's this kid's name? Malik Willis or Kenny Pickett? Is it Kenny Pickett? Malik yeah. Willis. Yeah. Malik oh, Willis is his name. He's he's from what's he went to, he he's from a small. <laughs> he just like spell Malik. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, um. What are your thoughts on it? Well, bringing it back to you know. It's funny because at this point, and I just want to throw out there real quick, Jacoby Brissett is also on the Browns, and I guess he threw out the statement that it's cool to be in an all-black quarterback room because those guys can share life experiences. And someone <laughs> was like, Baker Mayfield's still there, unless he's uh, Bequavius Mayfield now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's still there, so it's a, it, it's, 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 I don't know. Maybe, maybe they know something we don't. So that was funny, but also um, it's funny how similar their situations are right now. Like Browns and Broncos, both pretty good defenses right now. Both want to establish the run game for sure uh, with Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt on Cleveland. And then you have the young stud, Javante Williams in Denver. Uh, You know, both quarterbacks who put up plenty of yards when they want to. Uh, I think the big difference in their 
stats at the end of the year is just going to be that Cleveland will rely on the run game a little bit more. I think that Russell went to Denver with the promise from someone that he was going to be able to air it out a bit more than he was in Seattle because he is very capable of it. They have uh, plenty of weapons, way more weapons than in Cleveland. I mean, in Cleveland, there's, you know, and Joku, I do like, even though he's never really maximized his talent, in my opinion. And then you got Cooper. But outside of that, I mean, Peoples Jones, Higgins, I'm not really sold on those guys just yet. At least in Denver, I mean, Cortland Sutton, we've seen. Jerry Judy, we've seen. And then, like, KJ Hamler is an absolute speed demon. And we just got to actually watch him do something. So, uh, I I'm very excited this about year. Denver. I think, yeah. I think he might be Tyler Lockett. He, He's going to be the Tyler Lockett of the of the Denver. I, I think he is because you know you know how you know how Russell is when it comes to those to those types of receivers. Like he when when he especially once he start extending plays, he he's going to love that kid. I guarantee you that is going to be his go to, especially when he needs to get rid of the ball. Now, someone I didn't even include in this conversation, and you guys can tell me if you think this guy's going to have an even better season than these two. Matt Ryan did to get traded to the Colts. <laughs> oh my God! No. no. All right, I thought I'd throw it out there. Just and the there. reason why I say that is, yes, he has Jonathan Taylor. He has a running back. Problem is, he doesn't have any decent wideouts. Ty Hilton is pretty much on the back end of his career. We saw it a lot last year. He may revitalize his career, but I doubt it. Um, Did y'all know Kiss, the band, is still around? Jesus. Get out of here. Okay. But Mike, I think it's <laughs> whatever. There's a, I mean, there's a couple other wideouts that are there, but I just don't. I don't see it. Because, I mean, yeah. even if you – Ryan had a run game at one point, and he – obviously he had Julio. And I just – honestly, I, I don't see – I don't see it with him. I just don't see it. I don't see him having – I'm not going to say he's going to have a bad season, but I don't know how it's going to be a great season. It's not going to be like, oh, my God, it's a complete turnaround. It's not going to be a Matthew Stafford story. I can say that much. No, it's going to be another big Jonathan Taylor year. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a guy I forgot to throw out in the receiver category that I should at least mention is Juju did go to the Kansas City, and that could be something. You know, it's not nothing. So uh, maybe something there. Now, back to um, this talk. I wanted to wrap up our offseason talk. TJ, would you agree with me? And I, I hate to pick on your team, but I feel like this is a pretty fair consensus at this point. Would you agree that the Dallas Cowboys are the losers of the free agency period? Uh, they're the losers all the way around. Go Jets. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Did, they, they didn't have any big signings. They picked up James Washington from the Steelers. They they did have one signing, though, that I think is pretty important. <laughs> um, Jerry Jones has a new daughter. Oh. Allegedly. <laughs> I don't know nothing about this. Is, is she, this dropped she dropped the lawsuit. Did she? Like, Yes, he tried. what she said, so, but, she, but she said she still wanted to get a DNA test to prove that she is his daughter. But allegedly, she's 25. What and Jerry's what 105? <laughs> allegedly, <laughs> I, I don't, I, I did because this story came out of left field like right as the season ended, and it was just like I was like, mm, someone's broke. Their mom probably died, and they don't have any money. So they was like, "Jerry Jones is my daddy." Uh, I, I, you know, J- Jerry Jones funded the money for the ark to be built with Moses. I don't know if y'all know that or not, <laughs> or not, uh, not Moses. Who was it? Um, Noah. Noah. There you go. That's the one. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Like it's, it, it's really hard to say. Like, it, it's, it's just really hard to say at this point. But. And for me personally, I think it's all lower, lower malarkey, to be honest. It, the, the Cowboys didn't sign anybody that really comes to mind. I mean, obviously, you know, we started this. I, I told you guys that I don't really keep up the NFL, but nobody really sticks out. But I'm waiting for the Cowboys to do one or two things. 
they're either going to sign somebody that's just going to wow everybody, whether it's a good thing, a bad thing, and different. They're going to sign this one player that's just going to wow everybody or give somebody else another big contract. Or they are going to make probably the most stupidest, most boneheaded trade in the draft that is just going to blow the fans' minds out of the water and everybody's going to be more pissed off at them. And well, then next year will be our year. Well, you do know, so you do know right now, currently, they whiffed on it. So their last, so their last couple draft picks, linebacker wise, obviously Van Der Esch is not gonna, he's he's on his way out. We saw what they did to uh damn, what was his name? Jalen. Yeah, Jalen Smith. Jalen Smith. We saw what they did to him. Yeah. So I think linebacker is gonna be a a need for them. Well, they picked up Parsons and they picked up a kid from I think LSU. So hopefully, hopefully they set a linebacker. They, they, I think it, they're either going to have to go wide. For me, they're going to probably have to go wide out, tight end, or they're going to go somewhere on the defensive side. If that safety from Notre Dame is available, I think they're going to take. I don't see Dan Quinn allowing Jerry Jones to say, "Hey, let's pass on this kid." If he's available, when there's when they're up, I think they're going to take him. Well, and also, I mean, another reason I would say that you know it's not to pick on them, it's not to be a homer, but I do love it. I enjoy it because they absolutely suck. I hate the Dallas Cowboys, but <laughs> all that aside, it's not just that they didn't sign anyone. I mean, plenty of teams weren't super fifty. Active. Points. <laughs> Plenty of teams weren't super active. It's just that it was the guys that they lost that makes them the biggest losers. Real um important. Losing Randy Gregory was a big hit. Losing Randy Gregory, losing Amari Cooper. Yes, they traded him, so they that was a planned loss, but still that's big. I mean, Cedric Wilson as your third wide receiver really was good for them when they needed him. They resigned Michael Gallup. Resign Michael Gallup, but then you also lose your starting right tackle in Lyle Collins, and then your starting guard, and I think Connor Williams left. Yes, so they, I mean, they're, at, they're going to be two starting offensive linemen and two starting wide receivers, and your starting defensive end gone. So they're they're going to be they're going to be looking they're going to be looking for something in the draft. They're going to be. Can looking you guys hear me? For, okay. Yeah. You sound be, you sound and look fantastic. Maybe better than ever before. They're they're going to be looking for something. They're going to be looking for something in this year's draft. They they got to reach for something. Well, I bring this up because this really surprised me. Trayvon Walker, come on, don't don't do that. Why did it surprise you? Come on, man. I had not. I, this is the first time I've seen Walker as a uh, number one favorite. I've been hearing Trayvon Walker's name since the since the. Uh, What's the deal? God damn it. Why can't I think of it? Since the combine. Like, his name has been on a lot of people's board. And the crazy thing is, you think about uh, Jordan Davis, who this man is not even normal. Like Y'all keep, man, This is great. Y'all keep this up. I'm going to go pet my dog. Be right back. <laughs> so, <laughs> honestly, I, I honestly, I think that Trayvon, I think Trayvon Walker, if he doesn't go one, he'll probably definitely go two. So um, it, it's it's going to be it, it's going to be something. It, it I, I, so the whole time, like from toward the beginning of the season, I've been huge on Thibodeau. It's been all Thibodeau for me. I thought he was going to be. I've been hearing a lot of bad things about that kid. You know, all of a sudden, you know, he's stiff. He doesn't love football. He's got this ankle thing. And I, the stiffness and the ankle thing are here. I'm not I'm concerned. Not. I heard – well, I also heard, like, today I read an article. It was like the – a defense – like, a coach was like, yeah, he's he's a, he's going to be a, a lot to handle as far as, like, they're asking, like, does he care more about football or his brand? So that's never – that's – as a player, that's never something you won't question. What's more important to you, football or your brand? Like you, that's that's really something you never want question. <laughs> I mean, at the same time, you want your brand to be winning. So you, you, you do, but but, how, <laughs> but the best way to get you, the best way to get you your brand, your the best way to get your brand going is 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 by winning and by you know becoming that top that top pick. Because 
There's, an, I mean, hell, even and we're talking about Detroit here, okay? Their head coach was like, I don't like that kid. Like he flat out said he doesn't like him. So there's got to be something there. Like when one person says something, cool. It might be a matter of opinion. But when multiple reports keep coming out saying he's this, he's that, like there's got to be something to it because not everybody's lying about you. If everybody's saying the exact same thing, not everybody's lying about you. I, I mean, obviously something leaked, right? I mean, this whole process, and sure, it's been like mock drafts and just mock draft experts, but mm-hmm. even the top consensus guys, you know, even guys who really know football, Daniel Jeremiah, so-and-so, like they've all said eight to hundreds and two. So it's just really something. There must be some sort of tip off or some sort of leak that, oh, because look at this. I mean, Walker's odds went from plus 150 to minus 200 Sunday night. Like that's crazy. So something popped up. Something happened. He, he's the general, because it, it means he's testing well. That's what that means. That means he's testing extremely well with these teams that he's visiting, and people are really loving who he is as a person. So typically that's usually what that means. I think that he's testing well. Aiden Hutchinson is going to be, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be one of them is going to be number one. And the other one's going to be number two. Did y'all know Elon Musk is trying to buy Twitter? Bought it. Oh, signed, sealed, delivered for 40 Jump back, billion? baby. Was like 43 billion. blind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it was, it just dropped a cool forty-four billion on it. <laughs> is what it is. But no, yeah. it's. I don't know. This this year's draft is going to be. It's going to be interesting because I don't. I honestly, I don't see a. I don't see a quarterback going in the top ten. I just don't see it. I could see. Detroit, Carolina. Or no, those are really those are my two. If 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 one of those two guys doesn't go to well, or the Falcons, okay. So Detroit, Carolina, Atlanta. Mm-hmm. If those three decide to pass, which I think is very possible, um. But now with Detroit, I could see Detroit taking a guy and having Goff. You know, this be his like bridge year. Uh, but I. I could see Dan Campbell wanting to extend his tenure a little bit longer, get finally something exciting in Detroit, mm-hmm. and uh, the Lions take Malik Willis. But yeah, if if the Carolina Panthers don't take Pickett, I don't, I can't, I don't think Atlanta will. Maybe they will. I don't. It, here's my so here's my thing. Last year, last year was your year for the quarterback. Yeah. Last year was, yeah. and I understand you. We we are non, we are under new regime, and we had to take the best player available, which was Kyle Pitts. Last year was your chance for that, but this year, this year, this year ain't the year. This year is not the year to to take a gamble. No, I feel like you have Marcus Mariota. I feel like uh, Arthur Smith can get him back on track. You have to take a corner or you have to take a receiver. You have to. TJ. Hey, do, you ever get, do you ever get offended when TJ just <laughs> snores while you're talking? <laughs> do you, are you ever just selling your soul to him on a weekend and he just starts snoring on you? Sometimes. <laughs> it happens. But well, I totally so- agree. I think Arthur Smith is good for Mariota, and I think this needs to be a bridge year for them. I don't think this is the year. Even though they should have taken a quarterback last year, they, they should have. Last year was your year to take the quarterback. Yes. But this year is not the year to do it because as good as some of those dudes are, I don't think they're worth the they're worth that time. I definitely think you should just go ahead and either take a wide out or go ahead and take a corner because I'm thinking the, the Cincinnati corner, he might be there. The guy, what's his name? Stingley. He's from LSU. He might still be there. Depends right. on how the first seven picks go. Yeah. 
and depends yeah. on who might trade up into those that position to get it. But if they if either one of those kids are available, take him because you got AJ Terrell. He played amazing last year. Now you just need to pair him up with somebody for the other side. But what they're saying is because we signed uh, Casey Hayward, and oh, they're yeah. saying that he might be good. He's good enough to play or, to pair up with AJ Terrell. So we may skip on a corner. We may go wide out just to help just to help out uh, that offense and Marcus Mariota. Yeah, and either or should be someone solid. And whichever quarterback makes it past number 10, I think they're going to slide all the way at yeah, least if, to 20 where Pittsburgh picks. If anybody doesn't make it, if they don't get picked, if you don't get picked in the top 10, you're going to slide. You're going to yeah. slide a long way down, too. Yeah. Because I think the Saints are going to stick with Jameis. Obviously, everyone else. I think the only yeah, it's Pittsburgh is probably the only team that's not in the top ten that's going to need a quarterback. Yep. Yes, sir. All righty, folks. The moment everyone has been waiting for, Mister TJ. He's been dipping. He's been stressing. He's been doing <laughs> all the homework he could possibly do to bring you five potential players he likes for the Dallas Cowboys in the twenty twenty two. NFL draft this year. TJ, let's start off with your first player that you like for Dallas. All right, my first one. This credit goes to Mr. Keith Jackson, the football commentator, if anybody remembers him. The big old hog molly himself. I don't know if anybody that watches the show is going to even know what a hog molly is. I just remember there was this clip with Brett Favre when he was like, Keith Jackson, my mama made me some odd flapjacks and i said take away two of them flapjacks i gotta stay, stay hungry, hungry for the crimson tide, tide. Yep. <laughs> all right gonna be uh offensive guard mm. kenyon green from texas a&m we got a homer folks we do we got um, a in the house but he was also in the top three of the most penalized offensive linemen so he would fit great with the cowboys <laughs> what People love about Kenyon <laughs> Green is I believe he's a three, if not a four-year starter, and mm-hmm. he's played every position on the line except center. So he's very versatile. And right. That makes him a very, very viable option at offensive line. Yes. And it kind of it's a double-edged sword because if you don't have a defined position, you're probably not going top ten. But mm-hmm. if you have that versatility, you're still very valuable. So number TJ, two, who we got next? I'm taking one of Nate's boys. We need a receiver. We need a rookie receiver. So I'm going to take George Pickens from Georgia. Oh, that's a good pick. He's he's a he's it. a he's he's six five. He got speed. He got great hands. Um, and craziest thing is, he tore his ACL in spring ball, and was able to play in a national championship, which is insane to me. I'm like. What the hell type of medicine are we having now to where you tear your ACL in spring ball and you make it all the way to the national championship and you get to play? Actually, he played in the Michigan game. They only they limited him, but they, he played in the Michigan game. And, in, and I'm just like, so we just magically healing these heels now. So <laughs> what are we doing? Because usually that's you tear your ACL, you're done for the season. Oh yeah, the ACLs cool. have come a long way. And you're gonna, you're gonna get if they take him wide out wise. That's a, that's a really, really good pick. TJ, here's what I hate about your draft so far. I love both those guys. <laughs> right. I told you I did some homework. Hey man, who's that? Who's number three? Number three. Now this guy actually caught my attention. I can't tell you what who they played against, but he's from Penn State. It's the linebacker Brandon Smith. Love it. That kid is – I watched – I think I watched one of their games. I think I watched their first game against – who was it? Nebraska, I think. Their first game of the season, and they went toe-to-toe with them. They It was a defensive game. Um, And he stood out. <laughs> Going toe-to-toe with Nebraska is not a – Yeah, he's I mean, an accomplishment. I mean, Penn State is Penn State, so it's it's – uh, the, going toe to toe with Nebraska is like saying that you went toe to toe with the JV high school cheerleading squad. 
He's you an gotta interesting give, one. You got to give respect to Nebraska. You got to give more respect to Nebraska than that. He'd, he'd be kind of an interesting pair with Parsons because Parsons kind of – Parsons can play off-ball linebacker and he can also play on the D-line, where Smith can play linebacker, but he's also more of like a hybrid safety. So they would do kind of opposite things. And I would just wonder if Dallas would want him to bulk up, or it, it, they would be very interesting pieces together on the field for sure. Absolutely. Dick, oh, this Dick, uh, it out. number four. I'm going to totally butcher his name. I know I am. Yes, Jelena Woods. Jelena yes. Woods. Jelena Woods. For all you MFers out there, uh, they need it. Because didn't they lose Blake Jarman last? Didn't they lose Blake Jarman? Mm-hmm. But he was hurt all season. Uh, Dalton Schultz was fine. Dalton was Schultz good. got hurt too. So I think I feel like Dalton Redding, Schultz did the most for what you could with the least amount of talent. <laughs> like, right. He is a he's a fine athlete, but like if if that was like Darren Waller, I mean uh, he got the number, he got the targets to put up a crazy year. So what he's what he's six seven, two hundred and fifty three pounds. She's a big man. And he he's has speed man. on him. Four six one forty, thirty-four and a half inch arms. Is it he he he's a specimen? I feel like he would probably have more attention if he'd have probably went to what school did he go to? Virginia? Virginia yeah. Tech. Yeah, he I feel like he he might yeah, right. be, he's one of the, he's again one of those players like you have to watch and you have to have like have like tape on to be like hey this guy might be a dark horse he might be a good pick for us but Dallas needs a tight end and they no need doubt. and they don't need a, a a tight like a blocking tight end they need a tight end that's going to be able to uh they need a what's his name Jason Witten again that's what they need they need a receiving tight end that can you know cause mismatches against linebackers and safeties and also and also run block. Now, before I get to my number five, I got to put this guy as an honorable mention because I had a hell of a time getting a number five. Um, running back, Abraham Smith out of Baylor. Oh, look at you. You went deep on this one. <laughs> he really did. Now, oh, nice. everybody's going to say, well, what about Zeke? What about Zeke? We all know Zeke is the most overpaid running back in the on NFL. Way out. He's on his I've... way out. And I, I I don't know the other running back's name. I'm drawing a total blank right now. Pollard. Pollard, yeah. Pollard, okay. I like Pollard, but I think they need that dual threat. And with Zeke on his way out, I say bring in a young buck, let him get some reps in, and he can replace Zeke or Pollard or whoever when the time comes. So yeah, that's my a smaller mention. guy. Um, but number five, I got to go the safety JT Woods out of Baylor. Oh, my goodness, TJ. Look at you. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> this is what I happens so when I do you. some research. Man, are you going to bring this over to just be a dad? <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. So. Um, no, I love it. Woods is a guy who uh, – before like all the combine and testing stuff, I kind of just thought of as like a smaller safety who uh, might've been a liability. But now that like he really put up, he impressed a lot of people with his numbers at the combine. And now people are going back and seeing his ability on the back end. Like he's never going to be the, in the box guy. Like he's not someone you're going to bring down to help out and run support, but he like to play as they are now calling like over the roof, like to be that single high safety in today's game is huge. Like not a lot of guys can do it, play that Earl Thomas, like center field role. So to have someone like that, and I think he can do it is big. And especially for Dallas, they need a safety. So look at TJ bringing it home with Ooh, some great, has- great names, <laughs> JT Woods. Uh, well, and the other thing about JT Woods is, is it's noted here. Woods needs to improve on his discipline and tackling skills. If that doesn't say Dallas Cowboy, I don't know what does. Great, great point. So he's 6'2", 193 pounds. So he he's has the height. He probably has the speed and the range. The tackling is probably going to be an issue. But for his size, I'm for me personally, I'm not really looking for him. to. It just depends on what side. 
a safety. We're going to play him. I will put him at free. I'm not going to put him at strong. Strong safety, that's where I need my – that's where I need I need the guy that's going to come in and play in the box. Free safety, I need you to play the Earl Tommy throw. I need you to be able to play the outfielder. I need you to play sideline to sideline. I need you to be able to break on the ball when we need it. So I think if they if Dallas gets him, the thing is with Dan Quinn, Dan Quinn likes – He's not really big on safeties like him. Like he he obviously he that's why he tre- he uh drafted uh what's his name? Keanu Neal, which was in in just I wish he would have never drafted that guy. I, I really wish yeah. he drafted him. You make a good point there. He does, I mean, between Devontae Casey, uh Keanu Neal, like those are very physical safeties. Yeah. And I'm not sure. I mean, you look at what's him call who else? The uh Cam Chancellor. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. So maybe, you know, maybe it's someone else, but I definitely think Woods would help them out a lot. 100%. Uh, <laughs> the, the first guy you mentioned, Kenyon Green, I could absolutely see being their pick when all comes down to it. I mean, hell, guys, every year, this is like Christmas for me. I get pumped. I never sleep during the whole week. I'm so excited for the draft. Dude, it's happening this, this Thursday week. night. I don't know what time, probably something like, 7 30 like it always is but it'll probably be yeah, it'll probably about seven o'clock yeah. but uh man tj tj's top five that's definitely gonna be a new segment we'll we'll think of a top five for some every week i like the i like the way that sounds <sighs> you did a great job tj thank we you made it. hats off to adam scheffner for the first time ever hey here we are an hour in i said it's gonna be a short show because everyone in my house is vomiting here uh, your your wife is in the bathroom puking her guts up right now, and you're doing a podcast. Husband of the year, right here. Yeah. But hey, did you hear that Earl Thomas wants to come back? I did not. Yes, Earl Thomas says he wants to come back to football. What is he like? Seventy? Uh, thirty-three. But as a safety, it's easy because you get to sit back. You don't really have to do much. Damn good point. Speaking of not doing much, thank you so much for joining us, MF. It's been real. It's been about 63 minutes so far. It's been about time I turn it in and be a real good husband. Right? You gotta go take out some duties. There's sick people in my house. I need to go take care of that. But thank you so much for joining me. It's draft week. We've had a blast. TJ did homework for the first time since I don't know when. Third grade. We got to hear Nate talk about the Falcons. Hopefully, his dreams come true. Oh, yeah. Maybe we'll throw a little something together Thursday night. Maybe we'll not. We'll see. But until then, make sure you come back every Monday night, 9.30 p.m. EST. 8.30 on the Central if you're with these boys in Texas. Oh, and don't forget, we got a show every Tuesday night, too. It's called Just Be a Dad Podcast. It's on same time, 9.30 p.m. EST, 8.30 in the CT. We talk about dad stuff. TJ, tell them what we're talking about tomorrow night. Uh, let's see. What are we talking about tomorrow night? Uh, what made you want to be a good dad? There you have it, folks. So again, I'm Dylan. That's Whiskey. Down on the bottom of the Dirty Bird. Thank you so much for joining us. Peace.